The following presentation is rated TVMA. There's a question that's answered has vexed mankind for centuries. What would Jesus do? That's the question. Jesus? We're talking about Jesus? Yes. I realized I needed to re-examine the role of religion when Jen brought home this pamphlet from one of her ladies' sex education nights down at the church. Yes, <laughs> the Lord works in mysterious ways. So what would Jesus do? I, mean, I know what Calvin would do if he found out that you guys were smoking weed on the job. He'd fire your asses, rehire you, then fire you again for effect. But Jesus, I think Jesus would make you two check yourselves in a drug rehab if you want to keep working here. Aww. Do not moan at Jesus' decisions. Now, I got a whole other level of bullshit that I'm dealing with right now, so don't make things any worse than they have to be. You act as if we're addicts. All we did was smoke some weed. Ramadan's weed with a hint of pseudoephedrine for disinhibitory qualities and shit. There it is. Great! I come to this country to make something of myself. And your social climate where no one ever takes personal responsibility has made me into a junkie. Thank you, America. Thank you. How is it America's fault? Somebody's got to take the blame. My brother Derek suffered a life-threatening injury cutting my birthday cake. Trust me, you gotta know my brother Derek. Because he had a rare blood type, he was touch and go for a minute until he got a transfusion from an unexpected source. I'm your half-white sister from a secret bigamist affair your father had you never knew about. Yeah, easy enough for my half-sister Raina to explain to me, but how the hell do I break this to the rest of my family? They weren't as strong as me. I had to find the right words to cushion the blow. Pops had a white woman on the side. Kevin, you don't know what you're talking about. I know it's a shock, but it's true. No, you don't know what you're saying. He was married to the woman. They had kids, too. I took a class with one of them. You knew about Pop's secret fucking family? Calvin, we will not have profanity in this family. Okay, no profanity, but bigamy's cool. I know I should have told you, but I was waiting until you were older and more mature. You were waiting till I was more mature, but Derek knew? That's right. I'm more mature. In your face. How could you not tell me that Pop's had another wife and daughter? And son. But where do you meet this guy, Calvin? I think you're really gonna dig him. You guys got a lot in common. Oh, yeah? Like a fucking father? Calvin! Wow. Okay, Mr. Maturity. Your father was the kind of man that loved too well, too often, and a little too much outside the race. When I found out, I was devastated. Staying married was the hardest decision I ever made. But I was not gonna let my two boys grow up in a broken family. There will not be any broken families in this family. Pops was a cheat. You all knew about it, and I was left out? With all respect to family, that's fucked up. See, Mama? I told you to wait till he was 40. Jimmy. <laughs> Jimmy James. Mr. Mayor. Ex-Mayor. <laughs> I haven't won a campaign in decades. The political winds have blown by me. But, sir, the way you were able to cross over racial boundaries in this city that will never be forgotten. Jimmy wasn't kidding. Back in the mid-70s, Mayor Kane was known for being able to connect with the people. Those turkeys down at City Hall are nothing but jive time suckers. We are not going to take any crap from the man. You dig? All the people. You dig? Yes. But you know, Jimmy, the thing is, once politics is in your blood, it's hard to get it out. Like hepatitis C, but in a good way. Mr. Ex-Mayor, I, I have no doubt you could win just about any race you enter. Not any race. But I think I could win the race for alderman from this ward. But, but, but I, I, I'm running for alderman from this ward. I know. Why do you think I think I can win? Well, with all due respect, Mr. Ex-Mayor, I'm not sure that I I'm going to kick you... your ass, jive time sucker. <laughs> That's that. Game over. Oh, wait, you just gonna quit the election? Oh, God, no, no. No, I'm quitting you. 
I'm gonna go work for Mayor Kane. Wait, but, but Kane will have an unfair advantage. Do you know my campaign strategy? You had a strategy? Eddie Walker had finally found love. Ironically, for a guy who used to be homophobic, he'd found love with a woman that used to be a man. Whatever makes you happy. Unfortunately, sometimes what makes you happy has got a way of making other people real unhappy. Hewlett, beat it. What's good? We want to know. The word is you've been co-mingling with some deviant. My spleen hurts. Deviant behavior is for kids. My generation doesn't deviate. When my spleen hurts, that tells me I'm around a deviant. Oh, I got thrombrosis. What school are you part of? The old school that helped in segregation for our people? Well, the fuck the first white girl I meet in Colorado, new school. I'm old school. You better be. I'm pissing myself right now, Eddie. Not from lack of bladder control. From anger and lack of bladder control. I enrolled Terry and Yinka in the James Rickey Drug Counseling Center. James is one of the best counselors in Chicago. Known for his particular style of tough love, he was sort of a scrawny, nasty Dr. Phil. But unlike Dr. Phil, James accepted cash, coupons, and the barter system so I could get everybody clean and sober for six months of free haircuts. Okay, people, you know why you're here? Hmm? You're here because you're losers. Losers. Bunch of pathetic drug addicts. You bring it down to various races, what you're a representative of. It's sad is what it is. Look at you. Stinking up the place with just stink of drugginess. Somebody open up a window. It's getting all hot headed up in here. When does the actual counseling begin? Yeah, uh, this is it, druggy. Is it supposed to get you off drugs? Because right about now, I could use a Russian limbaugh size hit of Oxycontin. My Gucci's so tight, it fits like shrink wrap. This is retarded. I'm out. Terry, if you leave, Calvin's gonna fire us. And you think you're gonna find another job? Hmm? Good luck passing a piss test, druggy. See, because you don't have what it takes to turn your druggy, drugged up, drug life around. One more word out of you, it's my foot, your ass. <laughs> Shit, go on! My ass, your foot! Let's make it happen! Because that's the only way that a violent druggy like you can handle their problem is with violence. Kick it! Kick me in the ass! All you can do is prove that I'm right and that you're a pathetic, violent druggy. Kick it! I know it's tempting, but I gotta ask myself. <laughs> What would Jesus do if he were in drug rehab? I'm so nervous. I never made a pitch for a business loan before. I'm worried I'm going to fail. Oh, baby, you'll be fine. Is that fine, I'll get the loan, Jen, or fine, put a sock in it, because I really want to talk about my problems, Jen. Oh, it's my turn. Good. Well, my whole family knew that Pops was a cheat. Even Derek. I don't know what hurts more, that Pops was a dog, or that they trusted Derek with privileged information. Well, maybe they were doing this for you. You know, they were trying to protect your father's image. The whole life I spend trying to live up to this guy. Then I find out he's married on the side. I've never even heard of a black man actually being married to two women. Well, if there's any upside to this, your father was trying to be faithful to his vows. All of them. Faithful? He had a hoe on the side. Together they had a little hoe left. Sort of evil-looking Jennifer Beals. Jennifer Beals doesn't look evil. Well, no, I'm not talking about Jennifer Beals. I'm talking about my half-sister. Jennifer Beals is the sweetest face. I would love to have Jennifer Beals as my bigamistic half-sister. I'd love to have Jennifer Beals as a half-sister, too. Instead, I'm stuck with a Beals-alike who has evilness added in. You know, your sister's here for a reason. Why don't you just ask her what she wants? No, too obvious. That's what evil wants. I'm gonna just stay on guard, paranoid, and hypertense until she reveals her true intentions. Whatever. You know, we've been talking a lot about you. Could we possibly get some of my issues? You're trying to get a bank loan. I'm dealing with a secret second family. I think we're going to be on me all day. And I wouldn't make any plans for tomorrow. Why, Eddie? Why won't you introduce me to any of your friends? Are you ashamed of me? Do your friends even know that we're together? Of course they do. I'm always going on about my woman who used to be a man who's now a woman I'm sleeping with. My friends are always like, oh, shut up, Eddie, with your disturbing and unrelatable sex stories again. Well, I would like to meet your friends. I mean, you never take me anywhere. We never go out. It's just sex, sex, sex. Yeah. What am I? Just a body to you? Or are we actually working towards a relationship? You know, one of the things that attracted me to you was that you look like a woman but talk like a man. Now, if you're going to both look and talk like a woman, I might as well just be with a woman. Oh. I am more woman than most women, and I've got the receipts to prove it. I have got the best mangina, the best doctors in Taiwan could build. Mm -hmm. And if you want to keep getting some of this, you need to make me part of your life. 
your whole life. They do some good man Janas in Taiwan. Back at drug counseling, James was again giving Terry and them a little of his unique brand of sensitivity and compassion. You know what? I, I really don't understand you guys. I don't. I mean, it, it, it's mind boggling why you do the things that you do. You are working <laughs> weed with pseudofedrin. Sure, oh, that's it? Yes. 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 Okay, so, so you guys are just uh, <laughs> recreational pseudofedrin weed users then? Exactly. exactly. Okay, okay, now I get it. So, so y'all like itchy and scratchy over there, right? Because they just smoke a little meth too. Mm hmm. Every other fucking minute you have what it takes to get cleaned up on your own. So you're all getting sponsors to help you stay off the dope. And you? Yeah, you? You need special attention. Acid queen, you mine. I was in Cirque du Soleil. I can Come eat my own pussy while Come licking my ass. ass. Will you have sex with me? You had me at gigantic nipples. Great. Can Chris watch? <laughs> Chris can do whatever Chris likes. <laughs> he says you can watch. <laughs> With the shop staff slashed in half, for the first time since he'd hit the joint, Ramadan actually had to cut hair. <laughs> oh, oh, damn. Yo, my bad, dog. Mm, yeah, I fucked this shit up. It, it'll look okay with a divot in it. And all bleeding stops eventually. Yo, let me, let me cover it up with one of these fine products from Barber Select's Ben Hair Care line. Salon quality, but prices niggas like you can afford. Tested and consumer approved for the style conscious African American man who trusts his barber as a reliable source of information on personal grooming products? For African American men, or for men who just know what's going on. Thanks for the tip, Ramadal. I think I'll give Barber Select a try. Just please don't hurt me. Well, I am very encouraged by this turnout. And based on my year of political experience, this is exactly the organizational size I need to win this election. I want you to know, I appreciate your support, especially since you'll be working as volunteers. You know, kind of hectic sometimes. You know, okay, that, that. You, you see that? I'm actually happy about that. We talking about a social revolution, people. I mean, you know, and I'd rather get rid of all the non-social revolutionaries now than find out that they're not socially revolutionistic later. Yes, it's a volunteer position. Yes, there's going to be a lot of hard work, but at the same time, okay. Go, go, go. Couldn't be happy he's going. Now just weed out the riffraff. I need passion. I respect men of passion. You are my new campaign. Manager. All right. Jimmy James, hello. Veronica Far Right. I apologize for being late, but traffic is to blame. Not colored people's time or the man. Unless, of course, the man is a liberal East Coast lawyer, then there's a lot to blame him for. Wow. <laughs> I like what you got. In terms of your moderate to conservative politics. Great, so are you still looking for a new campaign manager? I certainly am. Great, because I was thinking... You said I was a new campaign manager. What? Yeah, I hate kiss-ups. Get the hell out! Suck ass! Get... So, you don't think it's an odd request? Please, this day and age, a woman wanting her man to watch? That's damn near Victorian. Anytime you want to trade off that girl and a man watching you for my sponsor watching me? Mm-hmm, <laughs> that's right. Get in the shakes, aren't you, girl? So what do you think, Eddie? Where relationships are concerned, I don't think there's anything wrong with... <clears throat> Deviant is what it is. Just what I would expect from your generation. Excellent, Eddie. Keep spreading our propaganda. First, we'll control the barbershops, then the laundromats. <laughs> <laughs> Goat's milk, give me gas. Calvin Palmer, consider yourself served. Served? I'm being sued. Malcolm, you're suing me for what? Look at him. Acting all innocent and shit. Public humiliation, invasion of privacy. You had video cameras installed in the back room of your shop, which recorded my client without his consent. <laughs> I have never had sex in the back room of a barbershop before. Oh, you think this is freaky? Wait till you see how I shave my shit. <laughs> oh my god, you're like a baby. <laughs> One of the three most humiliating days of my life, so I'm suing you. And I'm gonna take you for everything you've got. I've waited a long time for this, Calvin, but I'm finally gonna give you payback. Am I supposed to know you? Don't pretend like you don't know me. I'm not pretending. I don't remember you. Oh, you remember me. You know who I am. You didn't... You forgot who I am! Leah. Leah Robinson. Leah Robinson? Yeah. 
Girl, I ain't seen you since the eighth grade. I didn't recognize you with breasts. You look good. All grown up and beautiful and with breasts. Well, thank you. I've been getting myself together for the day I would crush you. Calvin Palmer took my man. Oh, well, now I see where you all getting your bad habits from. No, no, no. From. Hold up. Hold up. Okay. Now, I, <laughs> I did not take her man. What happened? Years back, I took Leah's man to a video arcade. And while he was playing a game of Miss Pac-Man, he was sure he saw something more miraculous than a little yellow ball eating dots. It's the Virgin Mary. Touched by this miracle, he decided to give up women and devote his life to the Lord. Calvin Palmer took my man. To the video arcade. Will you learn to finish a thought? The only thought I have to finish is paying you back. Look at me, Calvin. Look into the face of evil. I knew evil looked something like Jennifer Bills. Later, Yinka's night of freaky sex turned out to be a little freakier than he planned. <laughs> what are you doing? I'm having a snack. You're having a snack? I'm hungry. He's just hungry. He's having a snack while we're having sex. Well, you're the ones having fun. I can't have a snack. You don't have popcorn at the movies? Well, I don't have snacks while I'm watching other people have sex. Well, what do you normally do when you watch people have sex? I don't watch other people have sex. I don't know why you're acting like the expert. I'm the one doing the work. If anyone should have an appetite, it's me. You sure don't have an appetite for pussy. Good thing I could eat my own. This lawsuit is insane. She's only pushing it just to get back at me. I mean, I did something, something positive. I turned somebody on to God. You think I'd be rewarded for it? I sure as hell I'm not gonna try to settle. I mean, it cost me a fortune to fight. So, you have this obsession with Jennifer Beals. <laughs> I don't have an obsession. Well, you seem to be attracted to Jennifer Beals looking women. There's no attraction. I'm attracted to you. You don't look anything like Jennifer Beals. Well, I've been told a lot of hurtful things, but I've never been told that I don't look like Jennifer Beals. I'm sorry, I'm not mulatto enough for you. What is it? Do you have some sort of weird plantation sex fetish? There's no weird plantation sex fetish. So, you don't think it's weird to be obsessed with mulattoes? It is weird. No, I, you know what? Ever since you started your career, you haven't listened to a word I'm saying. My saying? what? Your career. You know, the business that you're starting with Dana. Well, you didn't say career. You said career with finger quotes. So why do my desires have to have finger quotes as if they aren't real? That's not what finger quotes mean. That, that, that's not it. Finger quotes are for emphasis. Like if I wanted to emphasize that you have a mulatto obsession. That's cool. Finger quote away. Because you don't have a mulatto obsession. That's right. And I don't have a career. The, the, you said it, not me. Pastor Sarah? Morning, son. Morning, Eddie. You ain't getting Terry in counseling again? Yeah. You know, it breaks my heart to see Terry get messed up with drugs. I care about that girl. I want what's best for her. Yeah, Yinka too. Hey, oh, he got to hit it with a circus chick who can snack on her own coochie. He doesn't need my good wishes. Isaac, let me ask you something. As a young white boy, inexplicably out of place in this neighborhood, are you ever concerned about how other people view your dating habits? Eddie, I can't explain love any more than I can explain Tucker Carlson getting another shot on MSNBC. But I do know that life is short. And I hate to wake up one day, 30 years old, looking back on my best days, knowing I didn't know love without regard to race or color or delightful lack of whiteness. What if love wasn't about race? What if it was about another gender? Yeah, good luck with that one. Considering everything that was going on, I figured I needed to have a little sit down with my lawyer, Leonard Part Six, who in addition to selling herbal medicine and being a former alpaca dealer, had also just started a new side business selling hair. Great for weaves, Calvin. Real oriental hair. Some of it's fresh. Not all the orientals that came from were dead. Okay, can we just keep it focused on my problem? Now this lawyer, she's coming at me hard. She's talking like she's trying to take away everything I got. The hell she is. Not only is she gonna lose, but we gonna counter sue and bleed her dry. Clearly, this case is racially motivated. How can it be racially motivated? Malcolm's black. But this lawyer... She's black, too. Okay, so we need to come up with a new strategy based on the law. Ooh. You're absolutely sure she's black? Yeah. And the guy? The plaintiff. Plaintiff? That's good. I ought to promote you to my assistant lawyer. Paralegal. That's really good. With you on my team, we gonna win this thing. Lawsuit. Damn! I wish you was with me the fourth time I took the bar exam. While I was explaining the law to my lawyer, Jen and her blind friend Dana were at the bank looking for a loan to get their business they had no business starting started. So I thought, 
Why should all the good bed and breakfast be way out in the middle of nowhere, where it's all quiet, picturesque, and you can't do anything but relax and sleep? Boring. So that's why we've invented UB&B. Urban Bed and Breakfast. It's the bed and breakfast you love, but right in the heart of the inner city to take advantage of the urban flavor. Pow, pow, pow! Southside! What seat you from, homie? So, it's a hotel. But with flavor. Booyah! Fuck the police! My super sensitive hearing is telling me his heartbeat is steady and even. I think the pitch is going well. I'm gonna have to run this one by the bank president. Okay. Uh-oh. I think that was just a wall clock I was hearing. We might be in trouble. Fortunately for Jen and Dana, in business, timing is everything. We've been hit with our third banking scandal this year. If I'm gonna stay out of prison, we have got to make a showy, philanthropic investment to a worthy cause. Any ideas? Hey, there's a black lady downstairs with her blind Asian friend. They wanna borrow some money to open a crazy urban bed and breakfast. I should just call security, right? just walked right out of there with all the money we needed. Just handed right to us. Right there. Just handed us the money. But you mean you signed a loan agreement and they transferred money into an account? I mean, they, they don't just give you money. They just gave you money? Yeah, well, I mean, clearly my receiving this loan was in response to accusations of fiduciary redlining. If fiscal redress comes to me in the form of independent economic opportunity, well, I guess that just makes me the financial Elaine Brown. You know what? You're off NPR for the next month. Now, it's not that easy to start a business. Even though apparently it is that easy, it's not that easy. And the easier it is now, the harder it's going to be later. <laughs> Do you have a problem with me going into business? Honey, you're my wife, and I love you. And I know how much having a career and following your dreams means to you. You didn't answer the question. Well, obviously, there's an answer in there. If you can't find it, then, you know, maybe you ought to think about whether or not you're ready to be in business. I don't want to be prejudicial, but before Jen's crazy opening a business and having a career and a life outside of the house nonsense got out of hand, I figured I ought to have a talk with Dana's husband, Nate. I got no problems with Dana going to work. Kidding me? I've been busting my ass for years. If I could relax while she's making bank, and she's only legally blind. Signature on a court document, she could be flying airplanes. But an urban bed and breakfast? <laughs> That'll never work. But instead of letting them get their dream crushed, I say we just end this now before they lose my balls. Lose your balls? Lose their money. Uh, you said lose If you're gonna dissect every Freudian slip, we'll be here all day. And you agree with me, right? You recording this? Word on the street is you got an obsession with secretly recording people and with mulattoes. I just want to be sure. David? Is that Calvin? Is he fucking recording us? Why don't you fucking say it a little fucking louder? Like he's not already fucking self-conscious. Hey! And right about then, Eddie was starting to have a sex change of his own. A sex change of heart about Claire. The way I heard this boy Yankee was actually allowing this woman's man to view him engage her in sexual activity. These young folks, they're sick. Sick in the head. Well, it, it was an experience, and I can't say Yinka enjoyed it, but I, I mean, sex. that's what life. Degenerate. I mean, you never catch me having deviant sex. When exactly was the last time you had sex? And when was the last time you had a meaningful relationship? So busy getting in other people's business, you won't know love when you see it. Love doesn't look like you think it looks. What the hell are you talking about? I'm talking about mangina. Oh, That's right. Man, Gianna. I am in love with a gender realigned he she. Now, I know the world is not ready for what we're all about. And not because of what we're about is wrong. But when two people refuse to let the world dictate the ways of their heart, it puts every other kind of so called normal love to shame. And Claire! You said you love. But you, in your old school ways, will have no effect on me. Claire, <laughs> I was just telling my so-called friends here about us and the wonderful, loving, sex-filled relationship we have. The what? I'm sorry, but you must have me confused with some other gender-realigned he-she. Unfortunately for Eddie, a few hours previously, Claire had his, her own change of heart. Who am I to come into Eddie's life? Start demanding things driving a wedge between him and his friends. I know. For his sake, I'll just pretend our love life doesn't exist. Oh, truly, I'm flattered by your fantasy of our love life, but clearly it doesn't exist. No, but it is real. It is not. Obviously, because I just put love life in finger quotes. <laughs> what? Wait a minute. 
<laughs> she, she, she has a mangina from Taiwan. And so is my radio. And my pacemaker. No, don't look at me like I'm crazy. I am not crazy. I'm... I'm a deviant. Claire! That shit's true. <laughs> Yo. What's going on? I came by to see you. Came by the shop. Hmm. What'd she tell you? She told us that she's your family. Oh, hmm. hmm. you told her. So now everybody knows. Calvin. Mm, that's great. Yeah, this is great. Jen told me not to be paranoid and on edge, but I knew you were evil. Mm -hmm. He said I had to come down here and tell everybody that Pops couldn't stay faithful, married him a white brought on the side, and had him a love child. I told him I was your cousin from Milwaukee. Why, why wouldn't you tell him? You're my cousin. Distant. <laughs> yeah, we had this little uh, joke in the family about how Pops married white chicks on the side. And had love children. <laughs> Can I talk to you in the back of my head? Yeah. yeah. All right. Chew that gum like you wish it was grape flavor crack. Spit the damn gum out. I knew it. I knew you were just coming around to mess me up. I'm not trying to mess you up. I came here because I was trying to spend some time with my brother. Well, now's a hell of a time to spend time. The last couple of days, I found out that I have a half-sister. I'm being sued over some nonsense, and I have no one I can lay this on because my wife's out trying to get her business started. And how's that make you feel? It makes me feel like shit. I want Jen to do well, but she's my rock. I need her at home so that I can... Oh, no. Oh, no, no. I see what you're trying to do. You're, you're trying about me so I can open up to you and you can sucker me in. How is showing concern suckering you in? I don't know. Well, what the hell else could you want from me? You obviously want something. I want dad. I want your dad. Our dad. Your dad. The dad you knew was this perfect guy. <laughs> That's what's messed up. Because I've been trying to live up to an image that wasn't real. And I've been trying to live down a dad I thought was a dog. And somewhere in between is the guy our father really was. I just want to get to know who that was with you, with my brother. I think you need to head out. That's the problem with trying to figure out what would Jesus do. Jesus was Jesus. The rest of us are just people trying to deal with shit. And sooner or later, no matter how Jesus-like you try to be, it gets hard to turn the other cheek. Matter of fact, you know, you want to hit me? Huh? That's what you want to do? Go on, hit me. I like to see you hit me. I like to see you do that again. Yeah. I like to see you do that with a back fist. But heart. Yeah. Uh.